I'll just offer a few words just to yes. thank everyone for coming to the archives. Uh, we appreciate your presence. Um, despite the roadways, despite the storm, which is really not as bad as it seems. We no, were discussing that bad. earlier. Yeah. Um, and I want to thank you, Scott, as well, for doing this. Um, part, we discussed whether I should offer an introduction, and he said, forget about it. The problem is that Scott is so modest about his accomplishments and who he is and how great of a colleague he is, he's not going to do justice to, to all those things. But thank you for being here, and I look forward to the, not, not only the presentation, but the Q&A as well. So thank you. Sveiki ka tevi et Es esmu laimīgs Prieks iepazīties Mēs te iecim Mēs te iecim Mēs esam skolā atkal Atkal, Megan! Sveiki ka tevi et Es esmu laimīgs, prieks iepazīties. Mēs te iecim, mēs te iecim, mēs esam skolā bet kal. Sveiki visiem, un tā ir mana dziesma, es komponēju, um, par uh, Pirmais Diena Skola. So I wrote a song for the first day of school. It, uh, it, it translates as, Hello, how are you? I am happy. Pleased to meet you. We're going to sing. We're going to dance because we're at school again. And wow. so I thought I would share that with you because one of the best ways of learning a language, I think, is to use it. And um, just, just as an aside, um, that photograph over there is is not from 1982, but that was like from last year. Or so, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you know, it's a very recent photo of me. Um, so, um, as as you guys know, um, I spent my sabbatical in uh, the country of Latvia, and I hope the question that everyone would ask is, where in the world is Latvia? Well. Here is where Latvia is. Um, Latvia is located, it is one of the Baltic countries, um, located in between Lithuania and Estonia. Um, it also borders Belarus and the country that shall remain nameless. Um, it's very close to Sweden and Finland. Um, and Latvia is divided into four not necessarily states, but regions. Uh, Kurzeme, which is where I had spent most of my time on my sabbatical. Uh, Zemgale, which is where my ancestors, my paternal ancestors are from. And Latgale, which is where I spent uh, um, a portion of the summer of 2019. Um, Vidzeme uh, is the biggest um, uh, region of Latvia, and the capital city of Riga, um, which actually has about 750,000 people, so it's like Boston, except Riga does not have suburbs, um, is actually located in Vizeme on the Daugava River, which flows from Riga all the way through Latgala, through Belarus, um, etc. Um, uh, um, uh, I um, Kurzeme and Latgale don't necessarily have meanings. Zemgale means the land that's under or the land to the south. And uh, crazy, Vidzeme does not mean the land to the north, but it means the land that's in the middle. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, go, go, go figure, go figure. Um, so I promise I'm not going to read off the power. This is the only PowerPoint I'm going to read off of. So some fast facts about Latvia, and if anyone has questions, uh, please you know uh, let me know. Um, Latvia is a small country, but roughly the size of West Virginia. Um, you can easily drive from one any of one of the ends to the other in a day. Population of slightly less than two million people. 
Um, therefore, um, speaking Latvian is kind of like you, you're, you're, you're speaking this secret code that only a little bit more than two million people know. Um, Latvians did not think of themselves as a distinct people uh, until the nationalist era of the 19th century. So, for example, I can trace my Latvian ancestry back until 1820, which is uh, about what most people can do because prior to 1820, the people who lived there, the, 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 the natives who lived there, the, Lat the what we now call the Latvians, they did not have surnames. They would just be Deb and Pat. They wouldn't be Deb Dean or Patrick Lacroix. It would just Deb, Patrick, Madeline, Heidi, no surnames. Um, so they didn't really think of themselves as, as distinct people. Um, politically, Latvia first became a nation in 1918, which is uh, after World War I. And prior to that, the territory was decided, uh, divided between uh, essentially Prussia, Russia, um, Germany, uh, Russia, Sweden, and Poland for a little bit of time. Um, and um, <clears throat> for those of us who are a certain age, um, if, if, if you don't really know much about Latvia, um, people may remember Latvia um, and Estonia and Lithuania because in 1987-88, um, uh, at the end of um, the Soviet Union, Glasnost and Perestroika, they did something called the Baltic Way where they actually, people held hands, literally held hands, on the highway from the capital city of Tallinn, Estonia, through Riga, the capital of Latvia, to Vilnius, Lithuania, the capital city of Lithuania. And um, part of the reason that I, I'm doing what I, I, I think I'm doing is because when Latvia uh, separated from the USSR, which was not entirely peaceful, um, it was referred to as the singing revolution. And that's really difficult for me to, even to this day, to wrap my head around. And so forgive me, I joke about it a lot, but it was called the singing revolution. It's really a, a, a country that sings, okay? So um, really, really interesting to me. Um, this, these are some of my, uh, well, they're my, my Brickman ancestors, Mani Brickmani Senchi. This is my grandmother, Salma. This is my grandfather. Uh, his Latvian name was Kristaps, but he was called Chris, uh, anglicized. Um, this is the oldest picture I have of my grandfather and grandmother um, taken in the U.S. Sometime prior to the end of World War I because they were married in August of 1918. And um, because her hair is braided like that, that shows that she is not yet married, uh, according to Lutheran tr tradition. Um, this is the only picture uh, I have of my great-great-grandfather, Martin Schemberg. Um, he passed away in 1925. Um, uh, my great-great-grandmother, um, uh, Louisa Schemberg, my grandmother, Salma, and my great-aunt, Lucille. And both my grandfather and my grandmother came to the United States shortly after 1905. And this is a monument to the aborted uprising against the Tsar, which is uh, right on the banks of the Daugava River, um, uh, uh, the 1905 uprising. And you can see uh, a, a pre-cancer Scott next to the monument. So it gives you some idea of how big this monument is. Um, so the, the, the immigration to the United States from this area, the people of this area, happened mostly after 1905. In the case of my grandfather, um, he came with his, his parents and his siblings because they knew that he was going to be conscripted into the Tsar's army as cannon fodder, and his father didn't want that to happen. 
Um, and according to my grandmother, um, again, things aren't always pretty, but according to my grandmother, she and uh, she's one of three girls. She and her sisters came with um, her parents to avoid being raped by the Cossacks. So um, that's, 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 that's why they ended up in the United States. Enough, enough about them. You can always ask questions. Um, so when I went to Latvia for my sabbatical, uh, one of the first things I did was um, uh, uh, actually one of the first things that, yeah, no, well, we'll skip that. One of the first things I did is uh, go to an incredible concert um, by a uh, group uh, called Tautumetis, which translates as folk women or country women. And they are incredibly popular in Latvia. Sorry, I'm, I'm walking in front of the screen. This is a bad teacher here. But um, uh, they're so popular that friends of mine from summer school, from Latvian language summer school, who are living in different parts of Latvia, traveled all the way to Leopaya. Um, so Riga is the capital, about 750,000 people. Daug of Pils, which is in Latgala, is the second largest city in Latvia, about 100,000 people. And I spent most of my time in Leopaya, roughly the size of Portland, 70,000 people. And um, Brenda, who is from Holland and actually is uh, an author, um, a wonderful young lady, very, very reserved, Anna, who is from Spain and is a kindergarten teacher. Um, and is a wonderful, wonderful dancer. And my sworn enemy, <laughs> Momoka, who is from Japan. Momoka, uh, I say this in all seriousness, almost everyone in Latvia knows who Momoka is because she is a rock star. Um, uh, Anyway, we can talk about Momoka later. So, so I guess my point is that the Tautimetis was, was so popular, such a popular group, um, that, that my friends came from all over. Brenda lives in Ventspils, which is way, way up north, uh, as does Momoka. And Anna lives, uh, lived near Tsetsis, which is in Vitzave. So the place where we went to the concert was Leopaya's Zintara Concert Zala, Leopaya's Golden Concert Hall, or Amber Concert Hall. And this is, this is not a stock photo. These, uh, these are all photos that I took. So this is a relatively new building, um, not very, very far from the apartment where I was living. And it's meant to look like a piece of amber. Um, it's four, uh, four stories. And in addition to being a, a legitimate concert hall where the Leopaya Symphony can play, where any kind of music, musical act can, can be, um, uh, it also functions as a community center. So um, if you wanted to take a class about how to make mittens or something, it very well may be at, at the concert hall. Um, it's, it's really a, a popular place. So unfortunately, when we went to the concert, um, there were signs that said, do not record or take pictures. And uh, contrary to popular belief, I do behave sometimes. And me being me, you know, buying the ticket and going to the concert, I was not about to take pictures or, or anything like that. However, um, I uh, came across this, and, and more, don't worry, there's more about the concert. This is re so interesting to me. This is how Tautimetis creates their songs. I hope that I'm, I can do this correctly, Aaron. Yes? Yes. Okay, let, 
maybe I should play that again because you might not have heard all of it. Yeah? So this is a folk song. That, that, that it's a folk, archive folk songs. I have three sisters. Okay? And this is them singing this song. Two members from Teltimatus. Our three cars. And then they put contemporary beats to the folk songs to create their music. So the one thing I I, I just I, I like clear the air with um, the, the members of Tautomatus, they they usually are five or six females. Um, uh, they have a core group. Uh, some some come and go. Um, they're in probably their early 30s now. Um, what I am going to say, and I'm going to kick and scream about this, yes, they are beautiful. Get over it, okay? Because, because what they are are incredibly talented. Um, they're clearly wonderful singers. Um, all of them are multi-instrumentalists. So during the course of this concert, you will see them, you know, somebody might be playing a guitar, put it down, pick up a violin, play that for another song, uh, pick up a drum and play that for another song. And the choreography that they do in the concerts is spot on. It's, it's not, you know, what, um, it's not what, uh, what, what we might be used to uh, um, seeing at the local um, watering hole on a weekend. I mean, this is, they're, they're really, really good. Um, and, whoops. So this is a video that I want to play for you, and then I'll explain the video. So this is a video that I actually took from YouTube, but they performed this song in concert. So you get, you'll get an idea of what they're like. And this is not the loud one. <coughs> so. Typical Latvian sea. Very quiet, playing cards. Came all the way here. 
through uh, deer and stuff, the land of deer. But you're a bird, and you're going to fly away from me. In defense of that guy, he is a real sweetheart in real life. His name uh, is, is uh, he, he's probably, I refer to him as the Paul McCartney of Latvia. His name is Reynars Kalpers, uh, and he plays uh, in a band called Pratrvetra, which means brainstorm. Their music is nothing like the, the name sounds. The music is kind of like middle of the road rock and roll, like maybe U2 or... Um, I don't know, Billy Joel or something like that. Com again, he, he is a, a legend, largely through the Eurovision Song Contest. His, his band was one of the first, um, I believe, the first Latvian group that was part of Eurovision Song Contest back in the early 2000s. So, of course, when I went to Tau Tomatoes, I, I knew of this video, uh, and I forgive me for shifting the attention away from Tau Tomatoes, but I'm, I'm sitting there in the concert hall thinking to myself, Boy, I wonder if Reynards is going to show. Wouldn't it be something if he would show up and perform with them? And sure enough, Reynards shows up, <laughs> walks out on stage, and I nearly lost it. So I know, excuse me, guys, I, I know I wasn't supposed to take pictures, but this was after the concert, and there's Reynards performing with the entire uh, ensemble. Um, including this little girl that was there. Um, as, an, uh, as an aside, the, the flowers, um, unmarried women tend to, uh, that's a real sign that you're not married. You wear the flowers um, on your head. Married women still do wear them, but, but for an unmarried young lady, that's clearly a sign um, before you put on a, a, a scarf or a bonnet. And just to give you a sense of how popular uh, Tautomatis is, when I was wandering the streets of Riga, the capital city, just I forgot what I was doing. Um, there was uh, an open air concert right down in the city center. <laughs> So uh, that was my little little video clip. Um, uh, uh, a lot of talking before I start singing. Um, so I just wanted to, to bring some some faces, uh, some some like um, make some of the names uh, tangible and real. Um, these I, I often I say that uh, in the event that um, you know heaven exists, mm -hmm. these two. Uh, have an entire, they, they have like their own suite up there. These are my Latvian language teachers. That's why they have their own suite because they have to deal with me. This is my first Latvian language teacher, Inga Leisna. And this is the 
person I, I'm not really studying with now, but most recently, Christina Anta. Uh, and Christina actually um, teaches, she's Latvian, but she teaches at Charles University in Prague, where unfortunately some of you who follow the news, that was where the shooting happened recently. And thankfully, Christina was actually not on campus when, when that happened. So these are my Latvian language teachers. And um, <coughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna pick up my, my, my friend here. <laughs> and you'll, you'll recognize my sworn enemy, Momaka. Um, yours truly. Christina, and another friend, uh, Germano, who, uh, who is actually from Brazil, um, us going out to lunch. Uh, so I, I, um, it's very common for me to go to lunch, to have like meet Inga for tea, to go out to lunch with them, and um, if we have time, I can tell some funny stories. So this was when uh, I got together with Germano, Momoka, and uh, Christina, for lunch at the most popular Latvian restaurant, which is a smorgasbord all-you-can-eat called Lido. Um, and so, um, maybe we'll pass some of these around. So how do you get your, how do you get your Latvian street cred? You get your Latvian street cred by joining a choir. And me being me, what did I do? Uh, when I showed up to Latvia, I immediately looked for a choir to join. Uh, and um, this, uh, of all things, so I joined a choir that rehearsed in Riga, and uh, they were called a Latvian Choir for Expats. So uh, it's, it was, it's actually a graduate project of uh, our choir conductor, Tina Galerna. And um, so she, she would, would go to a choir rehearsal. We would do some Latvian, we would, we would all introduce ourselves in Latvian, you know, Sveiks, Mani South Scots, Sesmo no Korea, no ASV, I'm from the United States, my name is Scott, and say something. We'd practice some Latvian, and then practice some simple Latvian folk songs. And here's, here was the kicker for me, the guy with the goatee. So I walk into my first choir rehearsal. I, I didn't know what to expect. I walk into my first choir rehearsal and I see the, the gentleman with the goatee. And my jaw dropped. And I said, Jeff? And he said, Scott? And I said, what are you doing here? And he said, what are you doing here? So this is my, this is my close friend, Jeff Grinwald, who is originally from Nebraska, uh, Latvian descent. He's actually a Latvian, Latvian citizen now. And he lives in Riga and works as an English teacher. And of all things, the first person I see is somebody that I, like, I was hanging out with him, you know, a couple months ago at soccer games and stuff like that. I had, like, I, you know, we're friends, but I didn't, I, I don't follow his every move. I didn't know he was going to be in the choir. So, um, Jeff, uh, my friend, uh, or our friend, Penny, who is from Virginia and married to a German gentleman who is uh, uh, working in Latvia. And uh, Jeff and I, again, at uh, a choir concert of the group Ave Sol. Uh, and um, from left to right, Dustin Welch. Uh, and I only know his name is Mikhail. I, I have to apologize. I don't know his surname. So Dustin is from Germany. And Mikhail is from Russia. He's a, a refugee from Russia. Um, and one of the things about being in a choir is it's, it's like um, there's a lot of bonding. Yeah, we get together and we sing, but we also do things, we also have social activities. Kind of like, like for, forgive me, but like team building activities. So, back to me. Back to, well, not me, but back to Latvian <coughs> does, does Latvia Does Latvia have a national anthem? Uh, yes. Um, not only does Latvia have a national anthem, but they actually kind of have two national anthems. So they have a national anthem, but 
it's very, uh, the, the uh, if you will, social convention for their national anthem is very different from the way we use our national anthem. They're not singing it at sporting events or anything like that. They only sing it um, during uh, recognized like uh, political events. So if we had, you know, if we had the ambassador from Bermuda that we were hosting and giving a special state dinner or something, the, they might sing the national anthem. But this is this is what most people know as the Latvian anthem. Now. Um, we have to, you know, apologize. It's a good thing that like HR isn't really here. <laughs> Close your ears, Deb. <laughs> um, it's 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 a bit of a it's, yeah. I know, I know. It's a it's a bit of a different. It's a it's not that bad. It's a bit of a different time. It's a bit of a bit bit of a, a different time. Um, one of the interesting things about most folk songs is that uh, they often have a hidden meaning behind the words. And so I will sing, and I will um, I will translate. Uh, if I have to sing again, I will do that, and then we'll talk about what's going on here. Okay. So this and this is why I'm playing this is because we sing this in in, in my choir. Um, I think I put my sheet over there, but I actually have like you know the, the sheet that Tina that Tina handed out for us to sing this, and it's in it's in all, it's in both of those books. Put veni Zien lai vinu Aiz den mani Kur zeme Kur zemnice Man so Latvian and then before we would sing a song we'd have to translate all the, the lyrics and she was a toughie shout out shout out to Tina so you hear what the music sounds like it's not it's not a real martialistic militaristic national anthem that you can imagine you know with a brass band and things like that gets a little gets a little bit more hairy here these are these are these are. Uh, I'm I'm not going to look at the words. I'm going to give you a rough translation here. So um, blow winds blow, take me back to Kurzeme, that section of Latvia. Um, 
there was a kurzame woman there, woman there, who promised me her daughter in marriage. She promised, but she reneged on her promise. How come? She said I was a big drunk. She said that I rode my horse too fast. And she said that I gambled. Well, you know what? Tell me, tell me, which pub did I drink dry? Where do you see me riding my horse? And if I gambled, I did it with my own money, and I ended up marrying her daughter anyway. Blow winds blow. Take me back to Corzine. So that, that's not too too bad. But here's 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 the hidden meaning. So so you have this woman who is promising her daughter in marriage to this man, and reneges on the promise and makes all these accusations about him that are not true. So any any guesses? Hey, Patrick, you know we talked about this, yeah. So any guesses? What's the song really about? Why is this an unofficial, or this was an unofficial national anthem? Because the woman who promised her daughter in marriage was the Soviet Union. They, you promised us that if we let you come to our country, that you would protect us from the Nazis. And you would provide us with this socialist utopia. And you reneged on your promise. You claimed that we were too nationalistic, that we wore our full costumes, that we sang our songs. And you know what? We're going to be free someday anyway. So this is, this is, this is the, the hidden meaning behind the song, um, which I thought was incredible. Uh, um, uh, uh, as an aside, I first heard this song. I'm not a Grateful Dead fan. I'm the furthest thing from a Grateful Dead fan. But there is a Latvian women's choir called Zintars. Remember, like, the Zintara concert sala? Uh, and um, Phil Lesh, uh, the keyboardist from the Grateful Dead, uh, apparently found this group when they were touring the United States, make, made a CD of them in the late 1980s, and it was one of the few CDs that you can get of, like, Latvian music back then. So I had that and, and heard the song on there. So... Um, <clears throat> most of my information that I have about Latvian folk music comes from uh, a woman named Ilza Valodza Abela, and uh, you will see her here in the red playing the drum. Um, unfortunately, I only know this gentleman here as Janis, which means John. Um, it's a very, very popular Latvian name. And they are members of a folk group called Banga. Uh, and they are really into traditional um, folk and pagan rituals and cultural life and things like that. And um, Ilza had messaged me and said to me, hey, if you're going to be, you know, I, I, you know if, if you're interested, um, my group is performing at this big, um, uh, it's Lach Plesestiena, which is kind of like a, it's a national holiday. It's kind of like Laughing Fourth of July, but it's in November. And uh, there was this big concert in, in Riga. Um, and uh, this is what, what, uh, what they sound like. Yeah, but... 
So this was this outdoor festival um, uh, for, for Let's Place of Stiena, the Latvian flag, um, uh, um, maroon, white maroon, sometimes mistaken with the Austrian flag, it's not. Man ir briva griva, it means I want to be free, or like we, we want to be free. Um, uh, da, 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 da. Um, essentially, this song was about uh, um, a kind of a folk song about a, a young man and a young woman walking across a stone bridge and through fields and things of that nature. Um, so, uh, before I play the next video from Lech Places Diana, I've decided. Oh, actually, no, I guess I, I'm, I'm going to have to, to jump around here. I'm going to sing. Um, one more time, and this is another one of those songs that has a hidden meaning. Um, uh, I don't mind listening to things again and again, so you're going to hear this about three times, okay? Estijayu pushu zemi kokladamis veladamis Estijayu pushu zemi kokladamis veladamis Prushu metas man gribeja parionku tu pature Prushu metas man gribeja Parionku pature Nepalishu prushu metas man pashami kurzeme Nepalishu prushu metas man pashami kurzeme Man pashami kurzeme Seta yauna liga vina Man pashami kurzeme Seta yauna liga vina Du ardir du prushu metas Du es prao tu us kurzemi Du ardir du prushu metas Du es prao tu us kurzemi Sus kurzemi Pats pasavas Liga vinas Nures prautsu Us kurzemi Pats pasavas Liga vinas So somewhat similar uh, to Pudveni and, and Deb what I was talking about like the HR stuff it's you know like into our 21st century years it's it's not cool. I mean, some of the the, the, the way that the lyrics speak about women, you know, like in marrying, and that those those kind of like traditional, you know, like get, you know you get married and stuff like that. That's stuff that I hope that is in the past, you know, um, the kind of uh, you know. But anyway, these are old songs. So um, what this is is actually a song um, telling the Germans to get out of our land. Um, and because remember, uh, Latvia was kind of equally split between German occupation and Russian occupation. And it's essentially saying, um, Russian women, um, I'm going, or, or German women, I'm going to, um, uh, I'm going to socialize with you. I'm going to eat your food, but I'm not going to take you seriously because back in Kurzeme, um, I have a beautiful 
uh, maiden waiting for me. And um, uh, I, when I travel to Corzume, I'm essentially going to forget you and marry this woman. So this is like, you know, again, it's I'm going to socialize with you. We're going to party and have a good time and things like this, but I'm not going to take you seriously. Again, not, not, not really, you know, um, not, not the type of, not, not very nice, but the message was Germans, get out. <laughs> Russians, get out. You know, this is part of this singing revolution, if you will. So, um, traditionally, and I can't do this, I can't do this because of my physical condition, but traditionally, this is a dance song. Um, Latvians are very big on dancing, and traditionally, not exclusively, but this is a men's dance song. So uh, my friend Jeff Grinwald, when when we had I met a bunch of my guy friends, uh, and uh, we were deciding what we were going to do. These are um, guys that um, I was part of a Latvian study group with. We studied Latvian movies, and we ended up going to a soccer game. Yay! Uh, and on the way home, uh, a really bad thunderstorm broke out. And so we, we uh, all, I know not the wisest thing to do, but we all hid underneath an oak tree on our way back to the city center. And one of my young friends, Andres, who's 24 years old, started doing this dance. He said, you know, we're, we're, we're just standing there. It's like, hey guys, guess what I learned? And he starts doing this dance and all of us start breaking. Because we all knew that it was the men's dance. And I'm not sure what the, like the, the pastors by must have thought of, you know, all these, this group of, of guys singing and this one guy doing the Eshizayu dance. But um, it, we, had a, we had a great time. So this is, this is what the dance looks like. And they have very nice shirts, right? So it's it's, it's it's usually it's and women can dance it, but it's it's a men's dance. <laughs> I didn't ask people what they thought, 
But I'm sure that some of the passers-by, given the extent to which Latvians sing and dance, probably just thought that we were out there re rehearsing, you know? And it, 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 so anyway, I wanted to show you that. So again, so like, say for example, if, if, um, if, if I was at an event and this song was playing, and I was there with one of my daughters, and, and we both knew this dance, and I danced this with, you know, with my, or my, you know, my daughter or something, it, it, people wouldn't think that this was weird or inappropriate or something like that. But it's, there's this kind of this gender, traditional gender division where it usually is a men's dance. You know, it's, you know, it, anyway. So why am I playing that? Because back to Lots Places, Stiena, there was a, um, middle school music group who performed after Banga. You might, you might hear somebody very familiar singing along with this. This is their music teacher. She's playing a Latvian, the, the traditional, this is the like national instrument of Latvia called a kokla. I have a photo of it that we'll see later. Um, it's a, 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 a lap held zither. But what blew my mind about this, not knowing what to expect going to this event, is that this is, a, this is like a, a high school, middle school group doing this performance. And um, it might be kind of difficult to tell by their rather stoic faces, but they're really into it. And I just was thinking to myself things like, you know, if I, you know, if I asked one of my daughters, with all due respect, when they were 12 or 13 years old, 
hey, do you want to, do you want to look, join a bluegrass group or something? I know what the answer would be. But clearly, this is, this is something that is such a part of the fabric of these people that it is like, it's like a cool thing mm -hmm. to do. And for me, it was just so, I don't know, like uh, gratifying to see this. And, you know, again, back, so, so you have young females singing this song from the standpoint of a man saying that, you know, get out of, get out of, you know, German women, get out of our country, you know. So that was, it, it there's that kind of, um, um, if you will, the, the way that we think of traditional, like, you know, like, uh, not traditional, the way that we think of, um, polite uses of, of gender, so on and so forth, in, in the 21st century is not the way things happened back then. So, um, as afterwards, I went to the, the next day, I went to the Latvian uh, Open Air Ethnographic Museum, which I've been to many, many, many times. And why I went there is because right after Latch Place of Stiana is Martin Stiana, which is essentially a fall harvest holiday and um, it's on the outskirts of Riga it's about a 30 to 40 minute bus ride uh, on the outskirts of Riga um, and for this event uh, it was um, largely geared towards children uh, in other words me <laughs> but uh, they had um, uh, for a lot of Latvian holidays uh, traditionally you'll make a mask to disguise yourself or wear some sort of a costume. So they had essentially arts and crafts there for the kids. They have their own restaurant there. And you have this parade on Martin Stiena. So during this parade, they would stop and sing songs. And it was clear to the museum staff who were leading the parade and singing and playing instruments that there was one person who shall remain nameless who wasn't participating in the singing and the dancing. Well, that uh, an end to that was that was a real quick end was put to that. This uh, I don't know who this, this museum uh, uh, employee kind of saw me after about two or three times, and she essentially went up to me and said, you know, didn't say anything, but said, "Look, Bucko, start dancing or else." So we got to take I got to take a photo with her. Um, at the end, though, and and why I what I want to show at the end, this was this wonderful, um, wonderful um, experience of, of uh, this um, singing game with children. <laughs> Grandpa Wolf, Vexta Vilks. And she's Grandpa Wolf, and come on, get on with it. <laughs> So it's kind of like Duck Duck Goose. It's a circle song. Sing it very slowly. And Grandpa Wolf is looking for one of the young kids who's in there. And you'll see her in the purple tights. And she has to hide. And then when the music gets fast, they chase her! Grandpa Wolf is chasing her and she has to avoid her! Don't catch me! <laughs> it was absolutely adorable. Absolutely adorable to watch. Um, so the only thing that was going through my mind is it was a good thing that I did not volunteer to um, do any of that because I envisioned myself slipping and uh, breaking an ankle. Um, the, the really cute thing is on the way home, uh, uh, again, it's about a 40 minute bus ride, so, um, and, and it's, it, there's only one bus stop and you can tell who is at the event. So on the way home, um, the buses in Riga, all the seats don't face forward. Some of them face rear-facing seats. And it really, to me, encapsulated in many ways what Latvia is about. I was sitting by myself on a seat, and roughly diagonally across from me was clearly a grandmother and a grandfather with their grandson who was probably about six or seven years old. 
and um, maybe after about 10 or 20 minutes of the ride home, maybe not 20, maybe about 10, you know, this poor little boy, it's cold. It was probably in the, in the, in the low 40s, upper 30s. Little boy falls asleep on his grandparents' lap. And to me, it just, it, again, it just encapsulated what this is, is that, that, this, that, that, that folk and traditional cultures there are so alive, and they're so <laughs> being passed from generation to generation. And I was thinking, as Robert Sylvain, uh, of wanting to pass these on to my children and grandchildren. And at this point, I'm going to sing you my special song for today that we'll talk about at the end of my presentation. Sus magus podu, ai ai juju, mate o vasaliti, juju, juju, mate o vasaliti, juju, juju, tasma mi beni. I was thinking of the, of the little boy on the bus. So essentially, it's I uh, Juju Lots of Bernie. It's like shoo, 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 little bear. It's a, it's a song about a bear, a, a bear, and it says um, it says father is going to go to the woods and collect some honey for you, and mama is going to go to the woods with father, and she's going to collect berries, and they're going to bring them back and give them all for little bear so that you can have a really good night's sleep. <laughs> and and again, when I was on that bus ride, that's what I was thinking. I was thinking this this lullaby, this beautiful, beautiful lullaby. Um, this is um, again talk about talk about what to me encapsulates Latvia, Manamasitsa Julia Deo. So um, I refer to this woman as my cousin. We definitely are related. We share DNA. Um, we share genetics. Uh, not that far back, we cannot figure out how we do. Uh, Julia is from Australia, and uh, she is a force to be reckoned with because she's a few years older than I am, and she plays on two Australian, as a hobby, as a hobby, yeah, plays on two Australian women's field hockey teams. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, this is not, yeah, it's not, forgive me, Sue, this is not baseball. Yeah. You know, it's field hockey. So anyway, um, uh, uh, my, my friend Andres, the guy who did the Sijayu Pushu Zemi dance, um, he invited us to uh, a dance in a park. And my cousin Julia happened to be there with a friend of hers. And we went to this park. I can tell you a funny story about the park. And... My cousin Julia learning a Latvian dance. No kidding. Like a pro. She's great. She's just the best. And this is again. She's a know this guy. You, know, you just go to the park, you know, and and you sit there, you know, and, and if you want to participate, you participate. Where, where, which you should. So the reason that we were in the park is because, um, and and again, I think that people kind of have this mis mis uh, this 
incorrect notion when uh, if I say something like um, you know if Deb, if you ask me like Scott what did you do when you lo when you went to Lafayette House I went and hung out at the club it's like mm, okay I don't know about that buddy so um, we were supposed to go to this place called Ala Pagrabs Folk Clubs which is otherwise known as the cave um, and this is what happens when you go to Ala Pagrabs Folk Clubs <laughs> Music, singing and dancing, and you need to know the steps. Just like Eshishayu Kushuzemi, I don't know what the song is, but this is not, you know, go out and do your thing. And again, look at how, uh, forgive me, to me, maybe I'm wrong, look at how young these people are. This is a cool thing to do! This is... That's a guy who has the right idea. So, so that, I, I spent, um, I don't know, um, not a lot, but maybe three different times I went f with, with, with friends to Alapagrabs Folk Clubs because you go hear all this Latvian music and you get to see this, dan this dancing and eat this traditional Latvian food and all this stuff. And these are young people. These, I mean, I think they're like, you know, 20, 30 somethings. These are not, you know, this is, it's, it's a living yeah. culture. And it was so exciting <laughs> for me to see that. Um, when you go to Riga's, uh, has a central market, which it's, it's known for, um, kind of shifting gears here a little bit, um, one of the things that you can have is something called a pirag. Um, I did not know, growing up, I did not know pirags as pirags. Um, my grandmother made them, and she called them bacon buns. Uh, me being me, you can put anything in them, um, but they look more like rolls that, that have ham in there and uh, onions and they're, they're incredibly tasty. Um, the one that I got there was me being me with some of my dietary restrictions is sauerkraut and, and a tea. Um, and that's, that's, it's just really, really, um, really, really yummy. Um, this is, uh, this is the apartment in the food, food that I had in the apartment that I rented. So um, the one thing that like when I called my landlady and Anita said, Scott, you know, you're showing up at X, X date. Is there anything I can do for you? And I said, Anita, I don't require much, but one thing I require is black bread and coffee. So the middle picture is the traditional Latvian rye bread that my landlady went out and got me so that I could have something to eat and coffee, which is just coffee. Um, but the, the, that's a, a Latvian breakfast. It's uh, base piens, uh, which is kind of, kind of like cottage cheese, but not um, uh, with um, uh, green onion, dill, and the black bread slathered with butter. And when I was in Latvia, I pretty much subsisted happily on salads. Um, that was, you know, a typical lunch that I had um, for the day. And um, the amazing thing is that uh, you could go and buy dill and green onions, and they literally are about the size of my forearm. That's, you know, that's, that's my countertop. And uh, each one of those costs less than one euro, in other words, less than a dollar, and they're incredibly fresh. And my friends all thought I was nuts because I was buying this stuff at the local supermarket when I could get it much less for much cheaper if I went to the open market. <laughs> you know, like I, I'm gonna argue a euro. Um, so um, uh, this is Milda, Latvia's Freedom Monument. Uh, uh, so the uh, again classic picture of what is what what do most people everyone has to visit 
Milda. Uh, she's this woman holding up three stars that kind of um, represent uh, Vizeme, Kurzeme, and Latgale. Zemgale at one time was part of Kurzeme, so when the statue was built, she had three stars. And this is um, her, her uh, freedom monument. And um, I think this would be an appropriate time for me to talk about some stuff that I don't understand. Sorry, Deb, I'm taking up too much time here, but I'll try to move it along here. Um, uh, uh, do, 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 do. Huh? No, no, but I, I thought, I, no, no, it's okay. It's okay. That's okay. It's okay. Uh, no, 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 that's okay. But just, you know, um, what I would suggest is just, uh, just slug me. So uh, the guys, the, my 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 guy friends, my guy friends, um, we were part of a Latvian movie group. Uh, we we in the Latvian National Library has uh, the Latvian cultural canon, and uh, amazingly to me, Latvia is known for their films. Who would have guessed this? <laughs> I, I wouldn't have, you know. And I'm I'm not much into like movies, you know. Um, but anyway, I watched them, and they're really, really interesting. This is a song, and, and the songs from some of these movies have become part of Latvian culture. So not this one, but the... Um, no, actually, it was this one. Sorry, my, my, my fault. It was this one that we actually sang in my choir, in the Latvian choir for expats. Um, uh, and it's from a movie called Chetri Balti Krekli, which was made in 1967, Chetri Balti Krekli for Chetri Balti White Krekli shirts, four white shirts. And it was essentially about how, um, how you change, uh, how somebody could kind of change who they are. Uh, so it, it, the shirts represent like, like you can wear, you can be one person in the morning, and then you put on a different shirt for your afternoon and maybe you're a different person and maybe a different shirt in the evening and then you have this different secret shirt that, that no one knows about. So um, th these, um, these songs are incredibly popular. They're so popular that uh, a, lot, a young Latvian indie rock band recently made a, an album of cover songs of, of Latvian movie songs that was really really popular. So this is this is Degus and Belts, one of the, the ones that we sang with the choir. Stop machine and motor meeting. Stop routine and cautin and spring. To Yotsika, one is Never 
Nevice Cuckoo Nevice Cuckoo Vice Cuckoo Ecco la nota è stata una device Dalla luce che ti è tu sussis Al Italian Shake of the Italian So, the crazy thing about this movie, uh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. The crazy thing about this movie, and, and um, I mean, sometimes, uh, you know, you got to be honest, I wonder, like, what was going through the mind of these people who are making this movie? So, what the movie is about is the movie is about a Latvian, in 1967, mind you, 1967, the movie is about a Latvian rock band who gets in trouble with the Soviet censors. Um, and all of the songs are essentially have kind of some of those, like, if you will, like, hidden meanings or kind of like, uh, not, not so, not, I don't want to say like, uh, like protest implications. So, so like, I, again, I'm thinking like, what's going through your mind? Like, this film was banned until the late 1980s. But it was, it was banned to be shown in public, but it was shown in private viewings. What, what is going through your mind? You're making a film about how bad censorship is in the Soviet Union, and you really think that, you know, Brezhnev is going to say, oh, yeah, of course, my favorite movie. Let's just show this all over the place. So, um... The, the lyrics the lyrics are kind of like a carefree you know like Casanova type um, uh, talking about cars motorbikes girls um, and um, essentially um, what 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 it's about uh, Degos's Baltz is the, the voice of the cuckoo Navai Navai's cuckoo Navai's cuckoo the voice of the cuckoo and talking about how um, you know, uh, you, you might have cars and motorbikes and girls, but there's still street corners that are frozen, and there's a lot of snow, and um, there's, there's frost and flowers don't grow, and if you give a flower to a girl and she doesn't accept it, she might just shrug her shoulders. Well, just go on with your life, you know, like you're this young, free 20-something. Just be free, be free, be free. And I'm imagining, again, I'm imagining like Brezhnev listening to this, like, be free, be free, be free, like over my dead body. So, um, but again, these, these songs are incredibly popular, um, and they get worse. <laughs> so, um, the other one that is uh, really, really popular is this one, and I will, I am not above telling you what I can and can't do. And what I cannot do is I cannot play the song on the guitar. So, uh, I will give you a rendition of this uh, on the piano. Um, can you hear me? Yeah? Yeah. yeah. Taka, zivi zelta zvina slava taka, zvaigs nu skritun zies. Kurir tavi generari, kurir vini javel zivi kadu selus est. Zaldatinos, Natsus Manam, Trepin Spelatias, 
Es zinu tikai to, kā viek tu Napoleonu aprak zemi Vai tas nesmeredu, bet dzīvo kā kieno baro auto silto piano Apraks tevi, apraks mani Kā ķeņīmi tā, kā silveks vēni pienu padresies Bitte alter Tinus, Natsus Mannam, Trepien spele dies. Spožums tā kā, Zīvis altas vienus dāvā tā kā, Zvaigs nu skrit un zies, Paņem savus, Alvas alta Tinus, Natsus Mannam, Trepu spele dies. Paņem savus, alvas zelta tīnus, nāc uz manām, trepjas spēlētīs, bet tu neskums, stīnē zelta tīnus, nāc uz manām, trepjas spēlētīs, paņem savus, alvas zelta tīnus, nāc uz manām, trepjas spēlētīs, Bet tu neskum, tīs te zelta tīnus, nāc uz vannam, trepin spēlēties. So this song is essentially about tin soldiers. Sorry for my faux pas there. This song is about tin soldiers. This is about somebody who is, again, think about the time, 1967, Soviet Union. This is about somebody who's delusional and is imagining that they're Napoleon and they can play with all of their little tin soldiers and manipulate them and make them do anything that they want. And this is going to pass the censor because, <laughs> you know, it's just totally, totally crazy. So um, anyway, this, this young Latvian folk band, Carnival Youth, uh, recorded both of the, so those songs, and they're um, incredibly popular. Um, uh, St. Peter's Church in Riga, where Johann Gottfried Mutel, a pupil of... Johann Sebastian Bach was the first Kapellmeister. Uh, the Lutheran churches in Latvia are huge, and I spent a lot of my time going to organ concerts. The organs are known worldwide. Uh, they are fantastic. And this is what one of the old, the insides of one of the old organs looks like. Uh, that they have in St. Peter's Church. And you can, St. Peter's Church also has an observatory. It's the, it's the second most popular observatory in Latvia. So you can ascend to the top of, of the church. I forget what it's called, like this balcony or something. It's a wonderful panoramic uh, view of Riga. Um, this is from one of the many, many Latvian museums that I went to. Um, these are traditional Latvian instruments. And Nori. Nori, Nori, as I try to impress upon my students in my world music class, that um, you could kind of tell something about where people live, that where people live and what they do has an influence on their music making activity. So Latvia, and one of my friends, uh, uh, actually one of the guy friends from the movie group, is from, um, from Yarmouth. Uh, and his dad is, his dad is a fisher. Uh, a, a lobster, lobster man, uh, and um, he teaches English in Yelgava. He's married. He's got two kids. Um, but Joe always says that that Latvia reminds him so much of Maine because it's very, very wooded. It's reasonably flat. That there is no Katahdin in Latvia. Um, but you'll see all of these instruments, all of the flutes, all of the airphones are made out of wood. This is. These are two examples of kokla. Both of them are kind of um, you know common and traditional, and um, I have played a kokla. It is possible to go to a music store and buy a kokla, but if you were the real deal, which I am not, what you would do is chop down a tree um, and essentially construct your own kokla, and it would take a very very long time to do and. 
Uh, you know, I am the type of guy who takes a screwdriver and goes to Collins and says, I want to use it, where do I plug it in? So I'm not chopping down any trees and I'm not making a cocoa. But that's, then remember when in the folk group when, when, she, when the, the, the teacher was playing this traditional Latvian instrument. This is so cool. In Leopaya, uh, Leopaya is known as the music city. This is the ghost tree. So there's one of the uh, popular Latvian rock bands from the late 70s, early 80s is called Levy. And uh, this is the ghost tree. And there are benches around the tree. And there are buttons on the bench, benches. And when you go there and press a button, You will hear an excerpt from a Levy song, as if it's coming from the tree. This is their most popular one, Zinta Valoda, my birth language, which again is an anti-Soviet anthem. go there at night that's my landlady Benita. the tree lights up and changes colors and you can just go it's right on the beach uh, there's a park right next to the beach in Leopaya and you can just go there any time of day or night press the button and obviously if you're there at night you get a light show it's really, really cool. Um, next to the apartment uh, where I stayed um, is something called the Hoyer Museum. And again, talk about something that kind of encapsulated Latvia. Um, my friend Brenda is a translator and an author. And I had a free Friday night, and I saw that the Hoyer Museum, it's, it's, a, it's a museum that dates back to the late 1600s, early 1700s. Peter the Great stayed there, didn't pay his bill, and there's a big placard that says Peter the Great still owes us money. Mm -hmm. So they, there was this poetry reading, and um, uh, these two women read their poetry. I am going to apologize profusely because the woman in the dark hair, I've forgotten her name, but she was the one that was the most fascinating the woman with the kind of the reddish hair and the white dress, her name is Andra Manafelda. And um, both of these women, but especially Andra Manafelda, who lives in Leopaya, she's like popular country, you know, throughout the entire country. So like, if you go into the bookstore, Janis Rose, which is, uh, they still have bookstores in Latvia where you can go in and buy books, you will see her poetry books all over the place. Um, the other woman, lives and this is what i found incredibly fascinating and difficult to wrap my head around but also shows the extent to which culture is valued in latvia she lives in this town called <coughs> skrunda <laughs> and and skrunda when you when you drive through skrunda on the bus it, it, it kind of sounds like when you, when you see like where you're coming, it sounds like what it, it is, like skrunda, like wah, wah, you know, it, there's, there's like, yeah, so I found out later from my teacher, Christine, that skrunda was where the VEF, the Vals Electronica Fabrica, um, the, 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 the Soviet electronic factory existed. And it used to be a thriving town, now it's not thriving so much. But to me, there is, at least where I drove through it on the bus, there was nothing there. But she lives there. I don't know, like, I'm trying to wrap my mind around, like, like what do you, like, what do you do? Like, I, I just don't know, like, what do you do? Not, like, not that it's a bad place to live, but, like, like, I don't know, like, 
do you work at the town office? Do you do you work at the library? Are you a teacher? Like, I don't know. She must do something. I don't think she's a millionaire. She's got to make her living somehow. Like, what does she do? I don't know. Um, so it, it just, again, struck me as being really, really fascinating. And there's this, again, kind of like the Tautamatus. There's this kind of like, if you will, like this image of, of, of what, do, what do Latvian women do during the winter? Well, they keep house, and then they sit in their corner, and they braid their hair, and they read their books, or they write their poetry. And that's how they're happy, even to this day. When I was in one of my hotels, I, and I have it on YouTube, I stumbled across, uh, like, essentially Latvian public television, and they were giving this special about, like, the history of the Skrundas music school. And I was like, Skrunda had, a, had or has a music school? Like, they had an orchestra. They had a wind ensemble. They had multiple choirs. And it's just like, ah! You know, this is like, my gosh. Like, this is what these people do. They don't, they're, I mean, I imagine some of them do, like, things like gaming and whatever. But they, they do the cultural activities. And again, I found that so, so interesting. Um, I have to, forgive me, I have to, a couple of sides here, I have to show you this. Um, Scott Brickman, composer with Latvian and Polish heritage, and sometime between December 28th, 2019 and January 3rd, 2020, um, I was diagnosed with stage 4 metastatic cancer. For about six months, I was waking up every day thinking to myself, is this going to be the last day that, that, that I'm alive? And then to know that they couldn't detect cancer, I just stepped back and said, I'm going to live. How do I respond to this? And the way I responded was by trying to include um, all of these life-forming musical notions that express my gratitude at my condition back then. So the first movement is very, very loosely, loosely based on a, a Lithuanian, not a Latvian, but a Lithuanian uh, vocal genre called a sutatine, um, which is a singing game. second movement, and I'm not going to give away too much here, but the second movement does not really quote a Latvian folk song, um, but is really uh, inspired by a certain Latvian folk song. The third movement is based on In Dolce Jubilo, the Bach uh, chorale, God's Son is Coming. One of the things that one of my uh, very dear Ukrainian friends said to me is the wonderful thing about your music is that it brings people together. And that really touched me. And I think, you know, obviously the music is important to me. You know, like these these notes and these strange chords and and you know wild percussion instruments, that's really important to me. And it just uh, again makes me feel really, really grateful to be doing this. So one of my side trips when I was in Latvia, I had a recording session in the Czech Republic. Okay, and um, and you know again, this is this is like you know this this is like mm. so um, I I, uh, I I told my teacher Christine that I have this recording session in Brno, and Christine immediately responds to me. Um, she wasn't married at the time. She's now recently married. She said, "My fiance and I will meet you at the airport." 
take you by bus to the train station in Prague and make sure you get on the right train to Brno. It can be a little confusing. Hmm. Wow. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then when I, well, on the way back, I met her and Lucas again, and we spent the day at Charles University, look, you know, seeing where Christine taught, um, and, and kind of seeing the sights of central Prague. So that was one of my side trips when, when I was there. Um, this is the um, recording engineer, Jan, and the videographer, Clara, and we went out for a celebratory lunch afterwards. And another side trip I made uh, um, in, um, uh, yeah, I don't know when, 2023, uh, April, let's say April, or, is, is to Kvitzin, Poland, uh, where I had, um, a uh, piece of mine performed by the Elbog Chamber Orchestra, which is based in Gdansk. Um, this woman over here is uh, my dear friend Ivona Glinka. She is Polish. Um, she plays the flute. She's a con she's a concert flutist, and in fact, she just performed uh, a piece of mine last week Friday that I wrote for her in Greece. She's married to a Greek man, and she lives in Greece. Um, there's there's the knucklehead taking the bow after the performance, and me with the conductor, Pavel Kotla, who is a force to be reckoned with. He lives in London, he's Polish, and um, friends with Iwona, and they organized the concert, and it was great. So um, I want to put, thank you, Heidi. I'm sorry for interrupting you. I'm trying to, I have trying nothing to, was, more to say, trying to, you should be really proud of yourself. I it's have, just yeah. Really beautiful. Yeah, and I'm so, seriously, I'm so touched. You know, like, I, I mean, I could have gone to Prague, you know, flew there and stuff, and Christine could have written to me, like, oh, I have papers to grade, or something like, no, 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 no. This is my fiance Lucas, and like <laughs> we're gonna like we're gonna accompany you to the train station, old man, and make sure you get on the right train so you're not lost somewhere, and Lord knows where. Um, I've, I've I've been to Prague, I've, I've been to Czechoslovakia before, but I really appreciated this. Mm -hmm. So these are um, don't cry, Scott, don't cry. Um, these are people who are so incredibly dear to me that it's not even funny. Um, everyone in Leopaya knows the crazy lady with the blue hair, my landlady, Anita. Um, I, um, I think of Anita as my little sister. Um, I had the apartment directly across the hall from Anita, you know, rented from her. And, um, uh, I'm not sure what I'm doing this summer. But uh, um, in June, um, and, and again, I want to make it not that it matters, but Anita and I, this is a completely platonic relationship. Um, I, um, I, um, Anita is going to be my date to a wedding that we're supposed to go to in Riga. Um, and um, again, uh, so Anita has a heart of gold. This woman is my friend, our friend Veronica. She is a political refugee from Belarus. Um, she was active in Belarusian theater, underground theater, and was counting votes in 2021 when they had the, 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 the uprising in Belarus. Um, and she had her life threatened. Um, and she was not taking any chances. She got out of there, and she lived for a year with Anita, like like rent free. And Anita, like Anita, put her up rent free in her apartment until Veronica kind of got her bearings straight. Um, just wonderful, wonderful young 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 lady. Um, and this is our friend from Georgia named Levan. Um, who uh, was a graduate student in law at the local university. There is Scott, his little sister Anita, who has those, both of us have those Latvian cheeks, don't do you? And our, our friends uh, Michael and Rita, who are from Canada. Um, of, of Latvian descent, and they happen to be in Leopaya. We met them for dinner. Um, this, uh, talk about you know, just talk about wonderful, wonderful people. Um, this is uh, over the summer. Um, Veronica <coughs> is a brown belt in karate, 
and um, I always feel safe walking around any street um, by myself. However, if I'm walking with her, I know I'm really, really safe because no one wants to mess with this young lady. Look at that. This uh, is my friend, Lindsay, who plays bassoon in professionally in the Leopaya Symphony as a full-time job. She's Canadian. She's married to a Latvian man named Elmars. And um, when I was there, uh, Lindsay was telling me, "Oh, you know, like the next time you're at uh, the next time you're at Drogas, which is like a uh, like a Circle K or something, go there and they'll have the uh, the magazine Musical Sun, and they have an article about all the bassoonists in Latvia. And lo and behold, my friend Lindsay is there. Um, so." Uh, the other thing that I would say is um, when I when I was in Latvia and I broke my wrist. Um, right after I broke my wrist, uh, Lindsay came. Um, her husband took me to the hospital, and just just to get you to give you an example of what these people are like, um, uh, I got my cast put on, and I'm back in my apartment. And Lindsay and Anita conspired. Uh, I was actually at a, a different apartment of Anita's. Lindsay and Anita conspired, and they said, "We've made an executive decision. You are not staying by yourself this weekend. You are temporarily moving in with Anita. Uh, Anita is a businesswoman. She said, you know, she said, Scott. She said, like, I can't, I can't entertain you. I will cook you a hot meal every day. You are welcome to any other food in my apartment. You have your own room, which has its own shower. Um, I have to work." But you know you're going to be safe. You're going to you're not going to have to worry about showering by yourself. You know if you you know you're you know, can I cut this apple? Can I open this bread or something? Because I was in my cast again. Just just people with a heart of gold. Um, and Levon uh, runs some ran whoops excuse me stay um, ran something called the English Club at uh, the local university. Uh, this is obviously pre broken wrist. But we went, we had a, a, a picnic uh, right outside of Leopaya. So there's Lindsay, her husband, Ilmars. There's yours truly, and this gentleman named Giannis, who is actually a lawyer. He is the boyfriend of Natalia, Levan, uh, Svetlana, and her twin sister, whose name I forget, and Lina in Timur. Um, Natalia, Lina, Timur, Svetlana, her sister. Uh, yeah, they are all, all Ukrainian refugees. And um, I'm not surprised how I'm holding it together. You'll notice Svetlana is, uh, has her arms covered and has a long skirt on. Svetlana is always has her torso and her most of her arms and legs covered because she is from Kharkiv and has uh, um, apparently uh, a ton of shrapnel wounds. Mm -hmm. So, um, but 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 look at look at look at her smile. Look at how happy she is. Um, so we went to Levon's. Uh, Levon plays volleyball. Um, he's from Georgia. The sign says something like "Go Levonchik." Um, had a great time at the beach. Um, and then this is my my landlady Anita, my dear friend, my little sister. We have fun hanging out in shopping malls, which are still a thing. Fancy, and Anita's vegan, by the way. Uh, fancy restaurants, sometimes not so fancy restaurants, and with our friends. Uh, and Anita's from New Zealand. She came to Latvia in 2020 or 2021 to, um, to live permanently and um, uh, owns properties there. She's a Latvian citizen. And uh, Anita is a huge, 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 huge 80s punk rock fan. So a lot of a lot of this is um, uh, a music education for me and for Anita, you know, like playing, you know, I, I don't whatever, whatever we listen to. Um, this is obviously pre-cancer, Scott. Uh, me and my oldest daughter Sophie at the Latvian Ethnographic uh, Outdoor Open Air Museum. We did the Latvian uh, Language Summer Program in 2018. Had a wonderful two-week time, daddy-daughter time there and me reading to my granddaughter, Rina. Um, this is the other, the, the middle knucklehead, um, my daughter, Emma, who lives in Levant and is married to the local boy, Jake Tardif. 
Uh, I took Emma uh, when she finished her um, undergraduate degree in 2019. Her, her, her gift from me was a trip to Latvia. Um, and my grandson, Theodore, um, who is half French. And every grandchild gets a string quartet. Stay tuned. Because... <gasps> Today? Oh, yeah, today. Oh, my gosh. 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock out in Colorado. There's Sophie. He does not yet have a name, but that's my new grandson wow. born in Denver. Um, yeah, yeah. So, um, really, really, really exciting. And uh, as I said, um, this is a, a kind of a traditional Jewish, uh, Sophie and her husband are what we call modern Orthodox Jews. And with the birth of each child, the world is created anew. Mm -hmm. So I think I'm just going to shut up and take questions and stop singing and things like this. And please ask questions because I know there's so much I'm trying to get through. Oh, the books. When I, 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 thank you, thank you, Sue, thank you. I, I thought this, this so so. You, I mean, it's it's me, it's me. So so one of my friends said, hey hey, um, the new the new songbooks for the song and dance festival are out. Go to go if you're in Riga, you probably ought to want to go to the music store and buy the new songbook. So of course I thought, look, no, I'm you know Joe Cool going into the music store buying a songbook, you know blah 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 blah, kind of like you know kind of if you will you know like parading around with my songbook. And I remember I got on the bus, and and it kind of like this didn't like this literally didn't happen, but I kind of felt like I should be getting on the bus and saying. I got a songbook, I got a songbook. And I'm looking around and it's like, everyone on this bus has this book. I'm just, just like everyone else. Yeah, it was, it, was, it was hilarious. I'm like, here I thought I was hot stuff. You know, one of the first guys to get a songbook. Every, you know, not everyone, but a lot of people, you could see like they're looking through, okay, what are we going to be singing and things like that. So, um, um, I have... This is, um, you know, and, and please don't take this the wrong way. Um, this is this is Latvian Christmas candy. Um, if anyone wants a piece, it's uh, it's a little bit month old, but you can help yourself to any Latvian candies that you want. This is uh, uh, this is actually a family. No, you're, people are going to pass on the month old candy. This is an heirloom from my grandparents. This is one of the few things that I have from my grandmother. It says, Pretsikus Zimasvetkus, which essentially means, um, I would translate it as Merry Christmas, but what it literally means is Happy Winter Holiday. Mm -hmm. So, um, uh, um, uh, I have, these are, these are not from Anita or from her apartment, but mm -hmm. when you walk into, a like Anita has these things, hanging in her apartments that, that she rents out. Um, this one, these are Latvian pagan symbols. This one is Yumis, which is the god of fertility. Um, this was gifted to me by my Latvian language teachers, which I thought was a little bit weird, but anyway. Um, and this is um, Janis, which is sort of like the, the Latvian god of the summer solstice. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, again, I, I noticed that like when I'm, I'm when I walk into the apartment or something, I'll see like you'll see these things hanging like from the kitchen or or something like some people might have dream catchers or, or something like that. Um, they're they're you know supposed to bring supposed to bring good luck. Um, of of course, me being me, I have a lucky and a hard eyeglass case, um, and I think and uh, another one from Riga, you know. Um, so um, I don't know what else to say, you know. Question. I have a question. Oh yeah, I do too. So okay, you know, first, Heidi. I'm wondering, like you clearly are very musical, and you have ancestry in this country. Like, what about your your direct ancestors? I don't, I don't know. Um, my grandfather. I, I have a photograph. I know that my grandfather. My grandfather died when I was five years old. My Latvian grandfather. He played the trumpet. 
Okay. Um, I mean, I don't think he, he wasn't like a concert. He was a construction worker. Mm -hmm. He wasn't like a concert trumpet trumpet player or anything like that. But he played the trumpet. And my dad would tell me stories about how when my grand well, when he was young, he remembers like going to picnics and listening to my grandfather play the trumpet. The other thing I would say, Heidi, and all with with all all again, just you know, mm -hmm. um, I, I I like yeah to a certain extent, I'm musical, but like. I'm a small fish in a big pond in that country, it, which is crazy because there's only two million people. I mean, I kind of thought that, like, you know, like, yeah, Joe American is going to just march into this place and tell them all about what music's about. It's like, no, 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 just the opposite, you know. Um, so it's 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 I, I it's it's um, it's a really well. Just another comment is that the culture there reminds me of the culture of Nova Scotia, Cape Breton Island, where Fiddling. it's just right yeah. in the culture where, you know, even if you're a stranger, you can be welcome to somebody's house for a kitchen Kaylee or something like that. Yeah. Um, one of the things I, I found is Manalat Vesha Vloda Ir Ne Labi Ne Slikti My Latvian language isn't good. It's not bad. It's like Kind of middle, like I, I can, I can get along, like in, in, in like regular situations. The, the phrase that I know that the, the like my, my meal ticket, if you will, is, is, um, depending on whether it's a man or a woman, I'm talking to spakes or spaka. Ludu es matios latiasu velodu. Hello, please. I'm, I'm learning how to speak Latvian. When you say that, when that comes out of your mouth. It is just like okay, you're one of us, um, and and the crazy thing, not to again, my, my, my language skills are, are are okay, are okay. I can I can go to the grocery store. There there are times when I would go there and just speak Latvian. You know, I I can't. I didn't understand the poetry reading. You know, because that's that's poetry. But a lot of times, there 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 are a couple times when I would just be on the street and people would come up to me and they'd say, um, uh, "Pido." Uh, like, and, and they, they, they'd be asking me for directions in Latvian. So it's clear that I somehow to them look like a local and their gut response was to speak to me in Latvian. And I would say either, um, ah, Kunguiela ia par labi or par presli, uh, you know, or, or um, uh, you know, or I'd say, pito des nezinu kunguiela. Like, where is, where is Main Street? Oh, it's either to the left or to the right, or I don't know where Main Street is. So um, it, 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 uh, it, in grocery stores, um, on the bus, there was one time I was on the bus and I gave up my seat to, um, I, I thought she was, again, this was just crazy. I thought she was of these, I, she got on the bus with this young woman. There was a, a woman, I don't know, maybe she was my age or something, I don't know. Um, got on the bus with this young woman and her two kids. And the bus was completely crowded, no seats. So I gave up my seat to her. And she, um, she said, Luzu, Salsa Metene un Bereni, like, like, hey, like, tell that woman to give me her child. And she the, the, took one of the childs and put him on her lap. And I started talking to this lady, um, and and I found out that that wasn't her grandchildren. That it wasn't her grandchild. And and she was asking me if I knew anyone in Texas, if I've ever been to Texas, asked me where I was from, and things like this. And then the most amazing thing happened at the next bus stop. Some more people got on the bus, and there was I don't know, like again I don't know ages, but there was a, a younger-ish woman who was sitting directly behind. And when some more elderly people got on the bus, that young woman, I'd like to think I started something, that young woman got up and told this, this elderly woman to sit in her seat. So it's just, it's, it's um, they're, they're not very, um, you know, Don, they're not, they don't look very friendly on the outside. They don't smile. Because the only reason you smile is not when you meet somebody, but if you, if there's a pork chop being beaten twice in the kitchen, you, it's a reason to smile. Or if you're driving and you see the police officer stop the car behind you, that's a reason to smile. <laughs> <laughs> um, but 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 they're they're really warm-hearted people. Um, again, so questions. So my question: yeah. When you were showing us the videos of the different groups that were singing, 
it felt like the singing was just like there wasn't harmony. It was just like this really one. I don't know how to describe it. it Monophonic. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was yeah, just yeah, like yeah, one yeah, yeah. thing. Yeah, one, and one. There wasn't all of this other stuff going on. Is that pretty typical that it's flat like that? No, it's more. It, in some ways, a lot of the folk music is more typical of what Tautomatis does. Remember, like how they they took that mm -hmm. and 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 they they have they have this improvised harmony, which okay. is the multi-part singing that yeah. I was interested in yeah. learning about. Yeah. Um, and and yeah, it, it, again, it's it's so so. No, that's really not that typical. Um, I didn't. I didn't have. A, I didn't want to. Um, I mean, I've already kind of gone way way over, but um, every. Every five years, they have a Latvian. Uh, they have a national song and dance festival. Um, they have, and, and I can share videos. Uh, I don't have any of mine, but um, they they have the, the choir. They have a uh, hundred thousand. No, I'm, I'm I'm saying that number correctly. A hundred thousand people in this arena singing together, and other people dancing. And why I say Momaka is my sworn enemy, Momaka is really into dance. And Momaka was, was, was part of the Latvian Song Festival. There were TV shows about Momaka. There were radio, multiple TV shows about this little Japanese woman who's a graduate student in biochemistry. And, and that, after that, con this, again, talk about, after this concert, um, shush. After this concert, um, Momoka stayed at, at the apartment because I had a spare room. Uh, Brenda and Anna stayed elsewhere. And I, I said, um, Momoka, like, um, just, you know, I'm be, being a good host here. I'm going to walk you to the bus station. And so I'm, I'm looking at the bus schedule, and I said, uh, Momoka, you're going to miss your bus back to Ventspells. And we're, unfortunately, at the time, we were talking English. Uh, Momos, Momoka's Latvian is great. She says, oh, I'm not going to Ventspells. And I said, you're not going back to Ventspils? Where are you going? And she said, I'm going to Tulsi. I said, oh, do you know people there in Tulsi? No. <laughs> OK, like, what are you going to do in Tulsi? They have a dance group. I called them up, or I messaged them or something. I said, hey, uh, can I come dance with you? And do you have a place where I can stay? And they said, yeah, sure. <laughs> and so she's going to this town on the bus that she's never been to to meet people that she doesn't know to spend the day doing traditional folk dance. Again, like, ah! Like, this is just so wonderful. And, and she is just, she's fearless. She's just absolutely fearless. After that lunch, um, Christine and I and Garbano were like walking back to the city center and we're like, Mama Car, aren't you going to come with us? She's like, no, 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 no. Um, uh, I'm going this way because there's a shop that I heard of where they make traditional folk costumes and I want to go see like if they have something that I can dance in and blah, blah. And we're just like, what a wonderful person. What an absolutely wonderful young lady. Other questions, Deb? No? No? Other questions? Patrick, yeah. About half a million, but... Um, okay, well, I'll, 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 I'll come back. I'll, I'll come back, yeah. Um, so, you know, I can't help put this in, in relation and conversation with my experience with, like, small cultures. Um, and I'm thinking, you know, not only Acadians, but, you know, Quebec, where there's this intense fear of assimilation and, mm -hmm. you know, larger culture. So I'm kind of wondering about Latvia, this oh, yeah. numerically small nation of two million surrounded by the, you know, by Russia for one thing, right. which is probably an overwhelming presence. Yes. And then there's Western culture, so are they feeling squeezed? Is there this concern and intense worry about the future? Not so much about Western cultures, um, but they're really about the Russian culture. So um, Latvia's population is roughly 60% ethnic, again, painting with a very broad brushstroke, 60% ethnic Latvian. 40% Russian. Um, the Russians who lived there were moved there by the Soviets because, uh, I hope I'm saying this correctly, Riga is a warm, even though it's way up there, it's a warm water port and it doesn't freeze. So you can trade during the winter and there used to be naval bases there 
and the Russians saw, uh, the Soviets saw this as strategically important, so they imported a lot of people there. So, for example, um, uh, the the Jewish there were there were um, close to a hundred thousand Jews that were murdered during the Holocaust in Latvia. Um, Latvia now has a population of. Uh, more than 10,000 Jews, which is kind of, it's the largest population of any of the Baltic states, but they are not Jews who have been, most by and large, not Jews who have been there. They're Jews that were moved there from the Soviet Union to kind of repopulate them. So when I was in Leopaya, uh, I went to the, for lack of a better term, the synagogue or where the Jews meet for prayer. And um, traditionally, when you join a synagogue, um, you pay like a fee, like you pay like a yearly fee, and that covers meals, like like you know whatever, like a membership fee. And I was asking them about membership fee, and they said, no, 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 no. Especially from you, we don't want a membership fee. We want you to teach our elderly Russian population English. Mm. In exchange for you know your meals and coming to our prayer services and stuff like that, so mm -hmm. yeah. cool. Very cool. Questions? No, everyone's gonna go to bed, including me. <laughs> yeah. Finally, get a yeah, night's sleep. That was awesome. I, it, it was, was very really cool. Good it was yeah, very good. Wow. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Is that a video of you?